Hello, everyone. Today we will be talking about uh, Oracle Integration Cloud uh, using um, OIC. So, Integration Cloud is uh, basically used when we want to connect external applications with Fusion applications that are deployed on the cloud. And it can uh, be two way integration inbound as well as outbound. So here the diagram tries to illustrate this uh, kind of scenario where you have the Oracle Cloud uh, on which uh, various applications that Oracle has deployed, including Fusion applications, Talio, Big Machines, Responses, right now, Elopua, et cetera. Uh, that's on the cloud and outside you could have external cloud like Salesforce and um, Workrite and Workday and all of them. And uh, on the other side, you could have the on-premises applications like the legacy of the apps, e-business suite or the PeopleSoft, SAP, Jelly AdWords applications or any other custom applications that are running. And those can also be integrated with Oracle Cloud using the OIC. Now, the great thing is that it not only connects with these uh, applications, um, the standard ERP applications, but also other applications, custom software, as well as social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. So long as there is a connection that exists between the two and the uh, web services exist, which allow the interchange of the data. The approach, OIC solution approach, when data is coming into application is typically, uh, you can say three ways, three stop approach. The first, let's say the file is coming from external applications. So we create the data or the file is put into a server on the backend server side, the file is there. So the file has to be sent in to Fusion applications and that passes through the fast platform or the OIC. So the OIC, the role of OIC is to read that file and transfer the file, the contents of that file to the Fusion applications by creating a connection and calling the respective APIs, the REST APIs or the SOAP APIs, which will insert the data into the application. As you know, the cloud database is a virtual black box where we cannot directly uh, update any data. So we have to use these web services, the APIs which are provided by Oracle, the REST and the SOAP APIs to insert and update the data in the application. So what is the role of OIC? Role of OIC is basically to create a connection between the applications and then create the integration between the individual pieces and where we might need to do a mapping of the data between the source and the target. And uh, we will be managing the integrations, activating them, deactivating them, scheduling them, running them on demand or you know, running it as per schedule and uh, monitoring the integrations, ensuring the information is handed over uh, between the applications properly. It can send out emails, it can transfer the data from one uh, application, one server to another server, FTP, SFTP, and all of that. So it can also handle uh, one-way or two-way integration. So two-way would be typically data coming into Fusion and then data going out from Fusion. And uh, so both inbound and outbound can be handled by OIC. So the important components of OIC are adapters, connections, integration, then the mapping that has to exist and the import export of the code. So we will look at that shortly uh, once we talk through these components, we'll go into the application, look at them. So what are the function of adapters? The function of adapters is basically to communicate with the remote application, process the requests and messages, understand any business objects, services, events, 
it can support standard and custom objects it can exist in on prem or on the cloud okay so typically there are two types of operations trigger and invoke and the combination of those trigger and invoke trigger is used to define the start point of an integration and invoke is used for an existing software service so we can use trigger and invoke together to set up the adapters use the adapters connection connections defines the application to integrate with each application can be used for inbound and outbound typically the connections are divided into four types cas adapter adapters which are used to integrate with cloud offerings then we have the technology adapters which are used to integrate with the data database or the os related files then you have the social adapters to integrate with facebook linkedin twitter etc on premises adapters to integrate with on prem and uh, bring the data into or push out the data from the cloud okay and uh, these are the standard uh, connect some of the connections are provided by oracle they come with the system so those can also be used the adapters are also provided integrations defines how information is shared between the applications and it also defines the different steps in the process you know step by step so you start you read a file or you know write the file then transfer the file to the server so each one of them is a step which will be defining inside the integration and once these all these pieces are put together we would validate that integration and activate that integration okay and uh, thereafter you know if we schedule it the integration should just run on its own at at uh, frequent intervals or as and when required now uh, when it comes to the inbound uh, along with web service we have seen multiple options uh, on the fusion side so you have hdl uh, which is used primarily for what kind of data it is primarily used for hcm data who uses it the technical teams use it uh, primarily the technical uh, teams use it high quantity of data can be handled by the uh, hdl hsdl is also on the hcm side uh, primarily users love to use spreadsheets so it is primarily aimed at in that them and you have the technical users also using them from time to time the technical team has to uh, design these spreadsheets and deploy it for the users and um, to use and typically it is used for medium to high volume of data but really high volume would be rather reserved for the hdl then on the finance side you also have the spreadsheet so you can import data using spreadsheets for uh, journals tables invoices receivable receipts and so on customers and all that and you also have the entire uh, ledger the chart of accounts the um, business unit legal entities all of those also created using the interfaces we also have the web uh, so interface is again something uh, which is for the finance side and primarily used by technical because it has the complete interface uh, which is exhaustive and it deals with a lot of data um, scenarios and also you would need to have some kind of technical team evaluating it and it can handle high volume of data okay and you also have the web service and the apis which we are right now talking which is again typically used by the technical team and we use the it is both applicable for financial and hcm part of the applications and the tool to be using is the oic so using the web services we load the data from a system outside the cloud and others are loading data from inside the cloud okay so 
uh, HDL, HSDL, spreadsheet, interfaces, you need to sign into the application. And then from inside the application, you are doing these tasks. Okay, compare that with web services where you don't need to be physically connected to the application. Okay, you don't need an explicit user ID password to be connecting to it, but you may want to use it as and when required. And uh, those connections can be handled remotely, right? So you put it in as part of your definition of the integrations and the connections, and thereafter the application will be using that uh, user ID password. Okay, so now we will go into the application and take a look in the application how the OIP looks. So this is your um, OIC, the cloud uh, infrastructure that can be, you know, the OIC as we call it, you have the user ID password and using that we are using and signing into the application. And this is the home page of OIC. On the left, you have the navigator. So bring it on. And on the left hand side, you can see the different things, uh, the my task, the processes, integrations, B2B, visual builder, insight, monitoring. Once you launch the integrations, you can come here and do the monitoring. And uh, these are two sample um, recipes that have been provided. Okay, so if I click on one of this, you will see a small demo, which tells you the steps. So how the integration can happen. Okay, so step-by-step step it is taking you. Uh, so this is how typical integration looks like, okay? And uh, so information is exchanged, so information is sent and received and so on. And here's another one which talks about the travel approval. You can run the demo. So you have the employee and the manager, two sites. So employee raises a request and this to the manager, manager reviews the request. If it's approved, it moves on. If not, it goes back to the employee and so on. Okay. And uh, here and towards the bottom, you have the summary and all the recipes and accelerators and all this. So you can also use this to go to different parts of the application, or you can go from here. Okay. So you have, let's start with some of the adapters here. So these are the adapters that are provided that come with the application. We have the Adobe uh, Sign, the Apache, the AQ, Ariba, Ace2, Box. So as you can see, all the different applications and cloud applications, you have the adapters which can which come pre-installed with the application. So IBM MQ series, Intelligent Advisor, JD Edwards, Jira, LinkedIn, Logistics, MailChimp, and so on. Everything is over here. Okay. So you can use them like this is Oracle Business Suite adapter. So if you want to view it, you can click here and it tells you about this what it does, there's a short description over here and uh, documentation links are provided. So all the help that you need. And if you click on these actions here, you can use this to create a connection. And so we're using the adapters, we create connections and these connections will be used in the integration. So when I go to the connections, I have different connections here. So I could have a connection to the server or a connection for invoking a business intelligence report. And these will be used in my integration. So if I go to the integration, I have a sample integration where I am um, invoking a BI report, reading that report. And um, so uh, then run the BI report and initially, it will come in, in a coded in encrypted manner. So I can then decode it and then generate an output. So in this uh, screen itself, I can, I have different things here. So you see it's a um, zoom that I can see. 
Now this is the vertical layout. If I want, I can switch to the horizontal layout, which is probably more comfortable and you can drag and move it around as per your convenience. If your integration has a lot of steps, you might want to read or you might want to move it, or you can select part, part of the application by using the select, then you can use uh, reset and things. On the right-hand side, this is the one for you to invoke it. This is the one for action. Whenever you want to add anything to this, we will be using the action. This is the one for the global variables. If you want to use the global variables that go to this, and this is the inside designer, okay? Inside designer is often useful when you are trying to debug or troubleshoot issues and it tells you, you know, step by step what it is and things like that. So you can give a particular uh, you know, variable and it helps you to track that down and things like that. So this in short is what OIC is about. And in our next video, we'll be looking at how we can define uh, integration to invoke a BI report and uh, from the fusion application, read it, encrypt it. It will come in the encrypted manner and then decode that output. All right. Hope this has been useful. Thank you for watching. Do comment and share your feedback, which will help us to improve what we are doing. And um, do subscribe if you like it, um, like and share with your friends, colleagues, and anybody else whom you think it might be helpful. Ciao for now. See you later. Bye.